So this is from shotgunworld.com. Let's say user. They typed it in. And okay, so my great 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 grandfather was constable of Christian County, Kentucky in 1807. When that county was twice as big as it is today, obviously people had to defend themselves back then. If they notified the constable, either he or his posse would deal with the troublemakers after the incident, not during the incident. The concept of citizen's arrest existed in English law over a thousand years ago in Kentucky since before the Revolutionary War. As of recent years, the language of citizen's arrest remains here exactly as it has for many years, but the politically correct party has legislatively hidden our right from us by relabeling relabeling it as arrest by private persons. So, Kentucky Revised Statute 431.005 Arrest by Peace Officers by Private Persons. 6. A private person may make an arrest when a felony has been committed in fact and he has probable cause to believe that the person being arrested has committed it. If as a private person in Kentucky I see with my own eyes that a person has committed a felony, then I certainly have probable cause to believe that he's committed a felony and I may arrest him. My probable cause that a person has committed a felony is not limited to me being an eyewitness of that felony, but without any legal doubt, if I see with my own eyes that a person has committed a felony, then I may certainly may arrest him. Now let's continue to follow this through. If I see in my own eyes someone's committed a felony in Kentucky and he say murders, so I see somebody who murders somebody, then he resists by me as a private person, then I may use force I believe necessary to arrest him. So uh, I see somebody murder somebody, I think I might be able to shoot him down, but if I uh, see him with bloody clothes on running outside his house, then I can arrest him unless he tries to kill me. So if he doesn't try to harm me, then I have to arrest him. I have to uh, tie him down. And if he tries to resist me when I try to resist him, uh, uh, arrest him, then I'm allowed to um, use force by any means necessary. Right? The state could do as the fuck as they please. And when I'm trying to arrest him, if he gets all, you know, tries to fight me back, he's, you know, he can't really fight me back if I'm trying to arrest him because he cannot claim self-defense. Uh, Kentucky Rev Revised Statute 35.045, imposition of arrest. Number one, arrest is the restraint of a person by an order not imposed as a punishment for an offense directing him to remain within certain specified limits. Confinement is the physical uh, physical restraint of a person. Two, dot, 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 four, no person shall be ordered into arrest or confinement except for probable cause. Five, nothing in the section shall be construed to limit the authority of persons authorized to apprehend offenders to secure the custody of an alleged offender until proper authority may be notified. Do not misunderstand that I must have an official government order to make a citizen's arrest in Kentucky. It means acting as a private person under the authority of KRS 431.005. Six that I may that I my uh, that I myself can order the alleged felony offender to submit to arrest and physical restraint by me until proper authority may be notified. What force may I, as a private person, use to lawfully arrest someone whom I've seen with my own eyes commit a felony? As a private person in Kentucky, I may make a lawful arrest for a felony using the force, the force which I believe is necessary to make the arrest, being the same force that a special law enforcement may use when they make a lawful felony arrest. KRS 61.920, Area of Jurisdiction of Special Officer, the powers and duties of special law enforcement officers shall be confined to the premises of the public property to be protected except while in pursuit of a person fleeing from the property after committing a felony or misdemeanor other than traffic violations on the property. In such case, the officer may pursue the person and make arrest anywhere within this state. In the course of making a lawful arrest for a felony after such pursuit, he may use and apply that force which he believes is necessary to make the arrest except that he may only use deadly force in making such arrest if the conditions specified in KRS 61. 916 are satisfied. In the course of making a lawful arrest for a criminal offense other than a felony after such pursuit, he may use and apply that force less than deadly force, which he believes is necessary to make the arrest. KRS 61.916 Use of deadly force to make an arrest. 
a special law enforcement officer may, in the course of accomplishing any lawful arrest for a felony committed upon the public property as herein provided, use and apply that force which he believes is necessary to make the arrest, except that he may only use deadly force to make such an arrest if, one, the officer is in making the arrest is authorized as a special law enforcement officer, two, the arrest is for a felony involving the use or threatened use of physical force likely to cause death or serious physical injury, and three, the officer believes that the person to be arrested is likely to endanger human life unless arrested without delay. KRS 431.025 Notice of Intention to Arrest Act of Arrest Force 1. The person making the arrest shall inform the person about to be arrested of the intention to arrest him and of the offense for which he is being arrested. Stop! I'm going to arrest you for shoplifting. Stop! I'm going to arrest you for speeding. Stop! I'm going to arrest you for beating your wife. Stop! I'm going to arrest you for beating your kids. The person uh, making the arrest shall inform the person about to be arrested the intention to arrest him and the offense for which he is being arrested. That's one. Number two, an arrest is made by placing the person being arrested. An arrest is made by placing the person being arrested in restraint or by his submission to the custody of the person making the arrest. The submission shall be in the actual presence of the arrestor. No unnecessary force or violence shall be used in making an arrest. So you can arrest somebody, but you can't beat the shit out of them. You can't. There can't be no police brutality, right? You can only hold them down, but you can't just sit there and wail on them and have a good old fucking time, you know, beating the shit out of somebody. That is illegal. Nobody's allowed to do that type of shit. In my opinion, as a private individual in Kentucky, I may hold at gunpoint someone whom... I've seen with my own eyes commit a felony involving the use or threatened use of physical force likely to cause death or serious physical injury. So if I see you committing a felony, or if I uh, see you or hear you threaten to use force, or it looks like serious force that would cause death or serious physical injury would result, in my opinion, according to this guy's writing, this isn't me, this is shotgunworld.com. I would be using lawful lethal force. If the person that I am arresting tries to attack me with a deadly weapon, he is using unlawful lethal force against me, and he cannot claim self-defense, and I do not have the right to defend myself with lethal force. In my opinion, IMO, and this really should not be controversial, if I had seen with my own eyes someone commit a felony involving the use or threatened use a physical force likely to cause death or serious physical injury, then I can arrest him as a private person in Kentucky per KRS 431.005. And I'm also a peace officer per KRS 446.010. that says 31 now. Where it says peace officer includes sheriffs, constables, coroners, Jailers, Metropolitan and Urban County Government Correctional Officers, Marshals, Policemen, and other persons with similar authority to make arrest. He cannot use lethal force against me and claim self-defense. KRS 503.055 Use of defense, uh, Defensive Force Regarding Dwelling, Residence, or Occupied Vehicle. Exceptions. One. Two, the presumption set forth of legal jurisdiction of using defensive force as intended or likely to cause death or great bodily harm to another in subsection 1 of this section does not apply if C, the person who uses defensive force is engaged in an unlawful activity or is using the dwelling residence or occupied vehicle to further an unlawful activity. So if there's an unlawful activity going on and the person is using the house the residence or the occupied vehicle to further that unlawful activity then a person, a citizen can arrest them. The person against whom the defensive force is used is a peace officer as defined in KRS 446.010 who enters or attempts to enter a dwelling, residence, or vehicle in the performance of his or her official duties and the officer identified him or herself in accordance with any applicable a applicable law and or the person using force knew or reasonably should have known that the person entered or attempting to enter was a peace officer. 
For a person who unlawfully and by force enters or attempts to enter a person's dwelling, residence, or occupied vehicles presumed to be doing so with the intent to commit an unlawful act involving force or violence. That is why home invaders cannot claim home invaders cannot claim self defense if they shoot an armed homeowner. And that's why carjackers cannot claim self defense if they shoot an armed motorist. It's better to understand the law than to pretend to understand the law. In Kentucky, we have to understand the KRS, the Kentucky Revised Statutes. That's the criminal code here. That is why I quoted what I must live by and not Iowa statute. I will take this yet another controversial step further. If a person sees two men struggling here in Kentucky and one is a larger aggressor who is atop a smaller man screaming that he will kill him and breaking his nose and bashing his head in against a concrete sidewalk and the beaten man is screaming for help and trying to keep the larger aggressor atop him from grabbing his gun. Each detail provable in the Florida case then in Kentucky the person is justified in using lethal force to stop the aggressor and to protect the endangered man. KRS 503.070 Protection of Another The use of physical force by a defendant upon another person is justifiable when A. The defendant believes that such force is necessary to protect a third person against the use or imminent use of unlawful physical force by the other person. Oh my god, okay, so then there's a couple more things. But I remember in school, there is a, a kid who was sitting there getting beat on by the, like, this fucking bully. And then this other big fucking dude who would, who would, you know, he wasn't a bully, but he very well easily could have been. He just starts beating the shit out of him. And um, eventually they both get fucking suspended. But really, the one guy was defending the other guy. You know, he was sitting there fucking with some smaller guy and he defended him. And that's legal. You know, he got suspended for it when actually what he did was he used force to stop someone else from getting hit. And not only is it legal, it's moral and very heroic. So, the defendant believes that force is necessary to protect a third person, right? You could protect a third person, you could stop anybody from hurting you, yourself, or somebody else. Under the circumstances, as the defendant believes them to be, the person whom he seeks to protect would himself have been justified under... KRS 503.050 and 503.060 in using such protection. The use of deadly physical force by defendant upon another person is justifiable when A. The defendant believes that such force is necessary to protect a third person against imminent death, serious physical injury, kidnapping, or sexual intercourse compelled by force or threat and be under the circumstances as they actually exist in a person whom he seeks to protect would himself have been justified under KRS 503.050 and 503.060 in such protection. So if a person's allowed to defend themselves and there's someone else witnessing it, then they can help with their self-defense, right? So, which is great, you know, they say a larger person, a small person, um, but the idea is one oppressor versus another one, right? Um, in my opinion, as a private individual in Kentucky, I may hold at gunpoint someone whom I'd seen with my own eyes commit a felony involving the use or threatened use of physical force likely to cause death or serious physical injury. And in my opinion, I would be using lawful lethal force. If the person that I'm arresting tries to attack me with a deadly weapon, he's using unlawful lethal, for lethal force against me and cannot claim self-defense. And I do have the right to defend myself with lethal force. In my opinion, this should not be controversial. If I seen with my own eyes someone commit a felony involving the use or threatened use of physical force likely to cause death or serious physical injury, then I can arrest him as a private person. Which we've actually gone already gone through this. But uh, in KRS 431.005 and also where he's a, a peace officer. So if I'm holding at gunpoint someone who I'd seen with my own eyes commit a felony in Kentucky involving the use or threatened use Physical force likely to cause death or serious physical injury. Per authorization of KRS statute 431.005, KRS 446.01031, then he cannot claim self defense if he attacks me with a deadly weapon, according to KRS 503.060, improper use of physical force in self protection. Notwithstanding the provisions of K, uh, KRS 503050, the use of physical force upon a defendant 
by a dependent upon another person is not justified when the defendant is resisting arrest by the police officer recognizing recognized to be acting under the color of official duty and using no more force than reasonably necessary to effect the arrest although the arrest is unlawful or to the defendant with the intention of causing death or serious physical injury to the other person provokes the use of physical force by such other person.